uh, you will be able to hear it again. You know, from my experience, uh, when you hear something that uh, you've already, wait, already heard for the second time, you suddenly notice that uh, you didn't hear a few, few things uh, in the first time, and it will be easy for you also to assimilate the material. At the end of the session, I will also send you the presentation itself so you can go uh, over it. During the presentation, if there is any question, you can stop me uh, uh, and ask me. And now I think we will start. Okay, so hello everybody. Um, uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. It depends where you are. Um, now in Israel, it is afternoon, so so I'm to vim everybody. You know, in Hebrew we say so I'm to vim, so so I'm to vim everybody. Welcome to the Rosslers Axtrax Pro New Access Control Management System commercial session and live demo. Axtrax Pro is our new 28 version that replaces the Axtrax NG management system. For those of you who still don't know me, uh, my name is Giora. I'm a pre-sales engineer at Rustler Security Products. You may call me Gigi. You know, Gigi is my nickname at the neighborhood since childhood, and I like this name very much. So call me Gigi. It will be much easier for you instead saying Giora, Gigi, it's better. And thank you for joining me on this presentation. But before we start with the presentation itself and dives into the details, I would like to share with you a few facts about Rustler. Rustler is a global leader in the access control domain. Rustler brings 40 years of experience in the security area and delivers advanced solutions across the globe. Rustler owns multinational in-house R&D teams, product design and manufacturing capabilities. We develop, manufacture and sell products to all major markets, supporting our partners to deliver projects of any complexity and size, from a single entry access point to multinational corporations with the most demanding requirements. Our primary markets are commercial entities, government institutions, educational facilities, along with other public and private businesses. As to our worldwide presence, we are an Israeli-based company, though our major headquarters is based in Hong Kong. So truly we can say that the son of a sets and rustler is we have offices across the globe. So we really have a worldwide presence. We have several places throughout China, while our main factory and the Chinese sales office is located in Shenzhen. We also have big presence in India, that gives us a full operation for supporting sales in India. And in Israel, we have our operation for Europe and our development team. As to North America, our North American headquarters is just outside of Dallas. And in Dallas, Texas, we have also development and our US operation. As you can see on the map, we have also two other locations in South America for sales and support in Colombia and Argentina and some of the Pacific countries as well. Axtrax Pro, the all purpose access control management software. As a platform for access control management system, Axtrax Pro automates the setting of physical access control policies across facilities. Our access control system combines all the components, controllers, readers, credentials, and peripheral devices to form an optimal ecosystem. But first of all, you should know that it is truly a client-server architecture. And when we say server, it does not have to be installed on a server machine, just a standard desktop PC for a small system is more than sufficient. We do recommend you only use it just for the access control software. And so nobody's out there browsing the web on it frequently and that kind of things, because otherwise it is just asking for troubles. But it is truly a client-server architecture, so you can have additional clients connecting back to that server. You can have up to 50 simultaneous clients at this point, 
That is, what, that is what the engineering folks are saying. And you can have a client on somebody's desktop in HR, so you can issue additional cards. And you can also have one client at the guard station up front, so you can keep an eye on what is going in the system and on the premise. And the third, and the first significant value-added service offered is the web client, the web-based interface. We will see a live demo uh, uh, with this uh, web client, with this uh, web-based interface, and we will play a little bit with the different screens. System operators can manage their Axtrax Pro on-premise server locally or remotely via this web-based interface. We will talk in details about this web client during our pre presentation. One of the main focuses we placed on the Axtrax Pro is increased and enhanced security. We will see later in the presentation all the innovative features and capabilities related to security that have been introduced into the system, like 256 AES encryption, OSDP secured channel, secured SQL database communication, and more. And the system has great scalability. You can start with a single door and go up to thousands of access points. All these new capabilities and innovative features and services make the Axtrax Pro an access control system that is perfect for today's most demanding organizations. I will present you now in this session, the Rosslers Axtrax Pro access control management system and its main features. The Axtrax Pro is our new software that is used for all of our networked panels from two doors with one panel and up to 1,023 access control panels. It is the same software all down the line. And now I will run you through the main features of the Axtrax Pro management system. You will see that we will go over some really important and useful features of the Axtrax Pro. And the first new significant feature and service is the web client. As part of the Axtrax Pro main new features, we developed a web-based application for the ongoing management of the on-premise Axtrax Pro server for daily tasks. Operators who were used to the Axtrax NG PC client can now use the web client for that activity. Please notice that the web client functionality is a subset of all the capabilities available on the Axtrax Pro PC client. And more complicated operations like installation, initial setup, configurations, and so on are still needed to be done using the Axtrax Pro PC client. Once everything is configured and the setup is ready, the functionality of the web client is more than sufficient for daily tasks. The operator has all he needs. The operator has six modules with the web client. He can operate the doors, users, logdowns, networks, events, and reports. All these things he can manage via the web client. And we will see later on in this session a live demo of the various screens of the web client. <clears throat> so as we said, uh, the web client consists of six modules, doors, users, logdowns, events, networks, and reports. So first, we'll talk about the DOS module. In this slide, we can see the DOS workspace in the DOS module screen. The DOS module allows the operator to operate his doors. He also has buttons to open doors and to let the user have an access. The operator has the ability to see the entire door list, to search a door, to see the door status, to check to what access groups the door belongs, to find out what is the access level of the door? Is the door part of an anti passback group? Is it in a lockdown group? And so on. Everything is mapped, everything is shown and presented, and the operator can control it. Here it is the same as the former slide, but for users. The operator can see the entire list of users, to see a user's profile, to add a new user, and to edit a user's profile. All can be done in the user's workspace in the user's model screen. All the user's information is here. User's access rights, 
users access level, operators rights, and the entire user management is done here. The Axtrax Pro system divides users into categories. The categories are ID holder, which is a person that is given specified access rights, a visitor, which is a person that is given temporary access rights, and an operator, which is an ID holder that also has access to the Axtrax Pro management software. Some operators may have a complete control over the system, while others may only be approved to view one section, for example. The lockdown feature allows you to secure facility access with a single push of a button, keeping intruders out of your building or from moving around in your building, ideal for schools, hospitals, and other sensitive places. Here, the operator can see the list of all the lockdown groups. The lockdown screen of the web client gives all lockdown information needed and has a lockdown button and a release button to manually operate lockdown on all doors or on specific doors. It also has an open door button to open momentarily a door during a lockdown and we will see it live. As we said, in the lockdown workspace of the web client screen, there is the list of all the lockdown groups that were predefined in the Axtrax Pro system. We can see the names of the lockdown groups, who are the doors in the lockdown groups, and who are the immune users in these groups. The Axtrax Pro system records generated events. A list of events can be seen and filtered by type and time in the event screen. An alarm can also be dismissed in the event screen. The event screen gives all the information about events. Event name, time of event, event location, the operation that caused the event, and event type like access event and alarm event. In large organizations, each access control panel is part of a network. The Axtrax Pro access control system communicates with each access control panel in the network. The network screen shows the status of all installed networks, all networks events, and all connected controllers pre-configured in the network. The network screen is actually a list of networks and their status. Here you can see the type and the model of the control panels connected to the network, specified network's name, number of controllers in the network, network IP address, controllers connection status in the network, and so on. And you can even do a test from this screen to the various controllers. Here we can see reports of different categories, like immediate reports that brings the who has been in today report, that it is actually a list that shows where and at what time each user was first granted access today. And there is also the controllers reports that feature attendance reports, which are lists that shows the attendance hours for specified users. The results include duration, which is the time period the user was present at the premise, time in, which is the time the user entered the premise, time out, which is the time the user exited the premise, date, and day of the week, and so on. In Axtrox Pro complete production ecosystem, security is very high from credentials to readers, readers to controllers, and controllers to server. We have put a lot of emphasis on security here using sophisticated encryption algorithms. One of the main security improvements and security progress implemented with the Axtrox Pro is in the communication between the ACA25 access controller and the server. This communication Sorry, this communication is now AES 256 bit encrypted. Before we used 128 bits encryption, but now AES 256 bit encryption is a common practice in the industry to work with. Secured SQL database communication. We are using TLS in the communication to the database. It is transport layer security, which is a security protocol that provides privacy and data integrity. It is used to encrypt the data that is transmitted across the network to the SQL server. 
and we can also encrypt the database itself. Encrypted passwords, Axtrax Pro encrypts operators' credentials, meaning user's name and passwords. Actually, passwords are hashed using SHA-256. It is a one-way hashing, meaning we cannot unhash it. So it is a stronger form of security. Basically, this means that as a company, even if we get the customer's database, we cannot decrypt the passwords. With the Axtrax Pro, we implemented OSDP v2 secured channel protocol, which is a new standard from the Security Industry Association, SIA. We support it with the ac 5 controller and all the peripheral devices, including the expansions for advanced session-based security. For this secured session that includes encryption, we use key exchange and key management for the encryption. And thanks to that, nobody could be the man in the middle inside this communication between the reader and the panel on OSDP secured channel. Every single time that there is a card passed at the reader, the protocol would generate a new session key, random key, automatically, meaning that every single time at every transaction, the encryption key is different. Then even if someone manages to decipher, it wouldn't help because next transaction, the key is different again. If you use a sniffer like a Wireshark on the data, the data would look different every time, even if the card ID is the same, even if the card ID is static, even if the pin code is the same pin code. Every time that the ID is transmitted from the reader to the control panel, it is encrypted with a new key for every session. And we are talking about 128 bits session keys that with the OSI, the OSI seven layer approach of communication, we build the session with these encryption keys until it is fully anonymized and fully secured encrypted. It means that if somebody breaks this encryption with a supercomputer, it doesn't see anything because that was only for one instant. So it cannot do a replay attack inside that reader port. It is the same thing for the OSDP bus, the RS485 bus, all the RSDNP Rossler's expansions, the 805's expansions, all those control panel expansions in the past did not have a secured session. Now for the Axtrax Pro, we have OSDP secured channel protocol between the ac 5 panel and all its expansions. And you have to understand, inside Axtrax Pro for default, we generate random keys and operate the key system automatically. This is the Rolls Royce of encryption. Even the operator cannot see the key. This is a major feature, major, very top notch because quackers, hackers and slappers, all these guys are getting more and more sophisticated. And this is something that definitely worth the money for the customer. Also this new 28 version brings with it further innovation. As part of this version, there is also the ability of the ac 5 control panel to support six ports of OSDP V2 readers over the RS-485 bus. And the next new feature we're going to talk about is lockdown. A lockdown is a group of doors that will be locked and cannot be accessed during an active lockdown. A lockdown will also activate specified output operations. And you can do a lot of stuff with smart links automation, meaning with AC links regarding those operations. The areas that can be locked down manually or by a predefined security event are specified in a lockdown group. Each operator will have the ability to create lockdown groups, that groups of doors that he wants to handle all at once. And you can also set user immunity. When a lockdown is active, only immune lockdown users can access or exit the premise. The operator can give specific users immunity for a specific lockdown group, so they can still open the doors even if the lockdown is activated. And we will demonstrate it when we'll be in the live demo. 
The major NVR vendors that the Axtrax Pro is integrated with are Higvision and Dawa, and there are some more to come. What will this video solution allow us to do? What can we accomplish with these video solutions? What it allows us to do is to have a pop-up or save a snapshot or a video message on any access event or any alarm event. So if you have a door forced opened, you can trigger it to grab a snapshot or a video clip of who forced the door open or who is holding it open. Likewise, you can just take a snapshot of people when they swipe the card for verification later. By the way, you can also have that pop up at a guard station so you can see who is coming in the door. You can actually have it pop up both a photo that is on file loaded in the software ahead of time, as well as the live picture at that moment, so the guard can literally do a quick matchup. The Axtrax Pro increases the number of options for defining access rules and determining access control policies and mechanisms. In order to determine and decide in various situations whether to allow access to a specific user or deny access, we can use a variety of mechanisms and access policies working together at the same time. We can use in parallel different access control mechanisms and access policies like access levels, access groups, interlock groups, and anti passbook We will go over each of them in details in the next slides. Access level is a new access control logic that the Axtrax Pro brings with it. It has a set of permissions and restrictions which can work in parallel to access groups. Access levels can be assigned to users and readers. This way, different security levels can be given to different access areas and only specified users can get access. A user can only access a reader that has an access level that is equivalent to or below his user's access level. Actually, it enables setting restrictions and permissions to specific users based on the level. So it simplifies the operation, especially, especially on public areas by using another logic and not depending only on access groups. And I will explain that to you here with an example. Suppose we have a person like a service guy coming to the site and that service guy doesn't belong to the marketing department. It doesn't belong to the sales department. It doesn't belong to management. It doesn't belong to any access group unless we make a special access group called service. And if you do that, you have to put access points and readers, access rights and time zones and create that access group for the service guys. But if we don't want to make a service access group and just want to give the service personnel access to some utility doors and some access to public areas, then we can use access level mechanism. So what we can do, we can give that service guy an access level of let's say three, and then we have the utility doors for different kinds of areas that we can assign their readers access level one or access level two or access level three, Basically, even if the service personnel don't belong to any access group, they still can access all the readers that have an access level three or below. Or for example, you have the dining room. So you don't need to put the dining room in every single access group. You just give permission to enter the dining room by access level logic. So if you have some sort of areas with access levels, you can manage them with this kind of logic with access level assigned to the person. There is a band of execution ways that you can use with this access level. Access level runs from one to 10. If you have access level 10, that means that you can open every door that has any access level. But if the reader or door has access level zero, that means that access level logic is disabled with that door. Access level zero means disabling the access level logic for that reader. Then, even if you have access level 10, you cannot use access level logic to access that reader and enter that door. And the only way to get through the door is by using 
access groups. Okay, let's see it now on the drawing. It will simplify things and make it easy to understand the operation mechanism and logic of the access control policies. On the drawing, we can see the user on the left. That user belongs to an access group. And now with our new feature, it can also be assigned with an access level. For example, let's say this user got access level eight. The user swipes his card at the reader, and if this user belongs to an authorized access group, he is granted access. If not, he is denied by the access group policy. But now we are checking whether he's allowed entering that door according to his access level. So if, for example, the user's access level is eight and the reader's access level is four, he is granted access. But if, for example, the reader's access level is nine, then is denied access. It gives a lot of flexibility in managing access permissions in the system. Or suppose you have in your organization quite a number of access groups and the access policies are very complicated. And now you want to give a specific person a new important visitor that comes to the organization. You want to give him access permissions to certain areas in the organization. The IT manager doesn't want to make changes in the access group's policy. He just wants this specific visitor to be able to enter specific doors. So all he needs to do is just set the right access level to the new person, and that user will be able to enter the required doors. It is just like as he becomes a kind of a super user. The second access policy that we have mentioned is the door interlock or mantra. The door interlock prevents two doors or more for being opened at the same time. You step in, the outside door closes, then you can enter the next door. Seeing that more and more with businesses that want to protect the property and want to be able to protect themselves from anybody rushing the door. It can be a good solution for dispensaries and pharmacies and also jewelry stores, any place with high value materials to protect. Anti-passback. The third access policy that we have mentioned is anti-passback. Okay, so what is it anti-passback? Anti-passback is a mechanism in the Axtrax Pro software that prevents somebody from re-entering an area if he hasn't exited first or using the same card over and over again to get in. And it is very flexible. I can do it based on time and then it is timed anti-passback, meaning you can't use the same card again for let's say 10 minutes, one hour or 24 hours. Or suppose you entered an area, then you can't read back in if you haven't read out. This is the door anti-passback. Global anti-passback is when you enter any access point throughout the organization and it doesn't matter which access point it is, and it can be even at a remote site, but you can't re-enter any other access point unless you have exited first at any exit point throughout the organization. And the last one, the last access policy is access groups. You are probably familiar with it, so I will run through it very quickly. The traditional logic mechanism of access groups is to let groups of users possess the same level of privileges. In the access group, we define who can go where and when. It can have multiple rules defined, and it uses a combination of readers, access points, and time zones, which are a bunch of periods within a week. Though access rights can be said to behave differently for each time zone, we mostly use time zones to set up the time intervals in which access is allowed for specific users. Access groups work at the same time and in parallel to the new access policy of access level mechanism, which the Axtrox Pro brings with it. And regarding setup and access group configuration, we have a very user-friendly interface with a review that makes it very easy to add users to each access group. And of course, it also works offline. Even if there is no connectivity between the control panel and the server, this mechanism of access groups operates independently in the panel locally. 
When you define a user, you open a ticket for him in the system with all the information about him. All the user's data is managed in here. It is a one-stop shop. You can actually use it, and we see this in a few places, like for HOAs and such, but there is actually fields in the database under the user data to have things like addresses, email addresses, license tag numbers, photos, access policies, credentials, et cetera, et cetera. So you can actually do that all within this one software. And it is also possible to import and export users' information into or from the Axtrax Pro database to a standard spreadsheet file. Time and attendance. In the Axtrax Pro software, there are very nice built-in attendance reports with preset formats that do basic time and attendance tracking. The only thing is it requires you to define an entry and exit reader, at least one of each. You can have multiple, but you must have at least one of each, one entry reader and one exit reader, so you can tell when you enter and when you leave the premise in order to do the time and attendance reporting. The time and attendance reporting is very flexible. You can track total time, or you can actually get real down to details, like when the employees came to the office and when they left for lunch, that sort of things and automatic and customized reports can be exported and be used by external accounting systems. Car parking management, the Axtrax Pro software is built in a way that it is really designed to manage a parking area with a gate. You can manage an area and you can even have multiple areas defined, meaning that you can manage multiple parking lots based on the number of vehicles in the parking lot. So if the lot is full, you don't let anybody else in. And yes, we can actually trip a relay to turn on a light, to turn on a light or a sign to tell that the lot is full. But another use for this that has popped up here of late, meaning lately with the COVID-19 emergency, is that this feature can also be used with any RFID reader to control access to an area and to limit the number of people allowed into this specific area at any given time. It is something to think about, you know, it is very easy to set up. And you can do it very easily. And now some few features that we will run through very quickly. The first one um, is email alerts. We can set up and get email notifications for almost any event that can trigger an AC link. All we need is access to an SMTP server. That means that we can send email alerts on access events, alarm events, and many other events that occur in the system, making sure the right people are informed. Reports, the Axtrax Pro system can produce various reports, including usage reports, attendance records, visitors, and roll calls. Axtrax Pro includes four main categories of reports, and each category contains multiple kinds of reports. Here, you can see it here. We took it from the reports screen. And the first category is immediate reports that list details of recent movements within the last few hours. They are shown in the display area and uh, can, be, uh, can be exported. Then beneath it, we see panel reports that display details of all recorded panel events. Then we have system reports that list details of system and operators activity. And last, we have interactive reports that list details of users and their access activity. We can have filters with these reports like searching by user's name, time and date, locations, access points, and so on. The Axtrax Pro report wizard allows users to design their own custom reports based on the needs for operation and administration. Alarm management, we've already kind of touched it. We are talking about pop-up screens when something happens, like swiping a card in the reader, it will pop up with details and give you all the information and tell you what's going on. You can also do that for alarm events, and I can have it through a pop-up on a guard station screen, screen for an example. It reminds us the email alert, something like that. It is all to ensure that your security center is responsive. 
wide credentials coverage up to 16 credentials per user. The Axtrax Pro allows each user to hold several means of identification. Up to 16 credentials per user is allowed and the system knows how to handle it. In fact, the Axtrax Pro supports the full range of all types of credential technologies currently common on the market. The biometric, meaning fingerprint and face, RFID cards, PIN codes, UHF tags, LPR cameras, and NFC ID and BLE ID. And, BLE ID. and we have mobile apps available for the NFC ID and the BLE ID. Even if we have a distributed organization with many branches, it is possible to scatter several enrollment stations throughout the organization, supporting different types of credentials and manage them all by a single system. Each user can have one of those credential types or multiple. For example, a user can have an RFID card for the office and a UHF tag for his car, if he has an authorized car, and his car licensing plate can also be identified by an LPR camera for the parking lot. And he can also leverage his mobile as soft credential using the BLEID app. Dual or multi-factor authentication, as we have quite a number of identification possibilities here, using different kinds of credentials, it is possible to combine the different credentials and implement dual factor authentication or multi-factor authentication. Meaning the user, the credential holder, will need to use two or more separate credentials in order to grant access, resulting in enhanced security. And now we have almost reached the last slide. Here we can see a table associating uh, the main new features of the Axtrax Pro to the various controllers. This table shows which features are supported by which controllers. Please note that this table is dealing with the main new features of the Axtrax Pro. The old features that are also part of the Axtrax NG system are not mentioned here and are fully supported by all panels. If you have an AC8 to 5 controller from the last few years with the powerful MCU called VG, then it supports all the new features of the Axtrax Pro. Here you can see it here in this column, uh, the AC8 to 5, and there is a green V uh, on all the new features. But what about the legacy panels? the 215, the 225, and the 425. What features do they support after the upgrade to Axtrax Pro? Among the new features of the Axtrax Pro, they support the first one. Here you see the web client. There is a green V for all of them. Uh, and they also support access level policy. Here there is also green V for the access level policy feature. And you should know that the web client is a major feature. So the legacy controllers still have a lot to gain from Axtrax Pro, seeing they support the web client and because they can still benefit a lot from the future connectivity to cloud services to come in the future versions of Axtrax Pro. So also a legacy install base can benefit a lot from the upgrade to Axtrax Pro. And so like we said, the legacy controllers also support access level policy here but uh, with the distinction here, see this sign, that it is for the online mode only, meaning you must have a, a live connectivity between the control panel and the server. And as a side note, you should know that if you want to upgrade to Axtrax Pro, you should have first Axtrax NG version 27.7.1.18. And if you don't have this version, you will have to upgrade to Axtrax NG with this version first. It is a two-step two upgrade process. And now we've reached the last slide, licensing. Regarding licensing, our licensing model and pricing concept are based on the number of access points approved in the system. While every access point is equal to an available reader port, whether it is used or not. There are two key items with our licensing model. 
simplicity and fair pricing. That means pay per system scale and pay per feature set. And then there is, in some cases, the option to expand the size of the package and add more access points and more web client local operators to the package according to your evolving needs. Our licensing model is divided into two plans, the basic plan and the standard plan. But excuse me for a minute, I will, uh, I will mute everybody because there is uh, some uh, noise in the background. Yes, okay. Okay, here we go. So the basic plan. The basic plan is suitable for very small offices with up to six access points and one local operator with a web client one interlock group, but without any lockdown group. And this plan is free of charge. But in the basic plan, there is no option to expand the package, not in the number of access points and not in the number of the web client local operators. And if you want to expand the system, you need to upgrade the basic package to the standard plan. There is, there is no need for a license for the basic plan. As we said, it is free of charge, meaning once you installed Axtrax Pro, you are already in the basic plan. You already have six access points available. The standard plan is for small to large enterprises. For up to 12 access points, 32,000 operators, and one web client local operator. Here you have 256 interlock groups and 1,024 lockdown groups. That is for the original package. And as your needs grow, there is an option to expand the system by adding some more access points with extra charge using add-on modules for 4, 8, 16, 32, 32, 64, 128, 256, and 512 access points. And you can also expand the number of the web client local operators by ordering additional operators packages of 4, 8, 16, and 32 local web client operators. And you have to understand that it is a one-time fee, both for the standard plan itself and for the add-on models. Okay, so now we finish with the presentation. Uh, and now we will uh, switch to the uh, live demo of the access control uh, uh, of the web client, uh, uh, the web client screens of the access control management system. Uh, but before we do that, are there any questions uh, regarding, uh, uh, regarding the presentation? Okay, I see that there's no questions. So we will switch to the, directly to the live demo. Uh, I will uh, first uh, stop share and I will switch to the, uh, uh, to the live demo. Okay, share. Here, share screen. Okay, tell me, guys, do you see? Uh, do you see the the screen, the black screen of uh, uh, of the web client? And yep. not, yeah. Okay, so you see that. Okay, so uh, as we said, uh, the web client consists of six modules: doors, users lockdowns, events, networks, and reports. So first we will talk about uh, the DOS module. Here we see the DOS workspace in the DOS module screen. Here we see uh, the list of all the DOS that are cu currently activated in the, and operating in the system. I have a smart search here. I can search for a DOS. It is smart because as I type the first letters, I see the relevant uh, doors, and here I see the all list. I see the name of uh, the door, main door, marketing door, server room door. If there is, a, is, if there is any description, you can see it here. Then I see the direction. 
in and out, is it an entry uh, reader or exit reader? Here I see the status. For example, I see that uh, door number five is in a lockdown situation. I have an action. I can open a door uh, from here, any door that I like. And it is just like as if somebody swiped his card at the reader. I open now the door. Uh, do you hear the clicks and the beeps? And the status changes. Auto lock, you see, uh, auto lock in a few minutes. Uh, uh, and it is exactly if somebody now is swiping the card. I can also uh, unlock and uh, lock any door from here. For example, I can decide to unlock uh, the marketing door. Uh, I can uh, do it for an unlimited time permanently, or I can do it for an interval of time. I'll do the unlock. Now, this door is uh, unlocked uh, and I can lock it back again. Uh, and it is, if I uh, click on a door, a side menu, uh, just a minute, there is a problem here, if you just, uh, okay. If I click uh, uh, on a door, a side menu will be opened. And now we we'll, we'll see some more details regarding uh, this door. I can see general uh, details of this door. This is the marketing door, direction, it's entry uh, reader. And I see uh, it's access level, it has access level two. Of course, I can unlock and open the door as I can do it from here. And I, okay, and I can also see permissions. Who is allowed entering that door? First, I will see uh, the access groups that this door belongs to, uh, all these access groups, and how many members, how many users in these access groups. And then I can see the ID holders, users. Who are the users that are allowed uh, entering that door? I see the name, the FOTA, and uh, the access level. And I see when it was the last time that they entered this door. If I click uh, on a user, uh, if I click on a user, I will uh, be uh, transferred directly to the user's uh, to the user's screen, to the user's module, and I will see all the details about uh, uh, this user. I can see uh, the users in a list or in a uh, windows. I see the name of the user, his photo, his department, his access group, uh, and I can see his access level. Uh, I can also uh, see, as we saw it before, in a list. I see the type, as we say, there are three types, three categories for users in Axtrox Pro. There is a, an ID holder, which is the person that is given temporary access rights. There is a, a visitor. I have a visitor here, down here, a visitor, which is a person that uh, is given temporary access rights. And there is an operator, which is an ID holder. The operator has first have to be an ID holder that also has access to the access control management software. As we said, some operators may have a complete control of the system, while others may only be approved to view one section, for example. I see the, uh, I see the name of the user, his department, his access groups, his access level, and if there is comment, uh, if there is any comment, I can write it here. I can search a user. I just type his first letter and then I get this user. And I can also filter the users by types, like oh, I can please show me all uh, the operators or please show me only the visitors. I have one visitor here that I can see that is not valid anymore. Um, and I can filter this list by departments. Please show me all the users in the marketing department. 
and who are from the IT department, uh, pre-sales, uh, and so on. And I can filter them by access groups, who are from their access group door two, and so on. Mm. If I click on a user, a side menu will be open, and then I will see some more details uh, regarding this user. For example, besides the name, the photo, the department, and access groups, I can see his access level. This guy uh, doesn't have any access level, he's disabled. I can see his car parking group, uh, output groups, and I see personal details. When he was first established, uh, in the system until when it is unlimited uh, is no a, a validity date and validity date permissions uh, i can see his credentials here uh just a minute this guy has three credentials he has a card rfid card ble app we have a ble application mobile ble applications that we can use our smartphone as soft credentials uh, so, uh, mobile credential and can also have he also has a pin code a very sophisticated one and i can see uh, to what doors this user is allowed entering this guy can enter the, the main door the marketing door and the silver room door and i can see due to what due to access group all these doors are members in his access group but if, for example, we take this user, we'll see that this user is allowed for these two doors, marketing door and server room doors, while the first door, the marketing door, is allowed due to his access group. The second door is allowed due to his access level, meaning that uh, door number three, the server room door, is not a member in his access group. So according to the access group policy, he will not be allowed, he will not be authorized. But because of his access level, he has access level three, uh, he will be allowed entering uh, that door. From this screen, I also edit the details about uh, uh, each uh, uh, user. I can edit the profile. I press the edit button. And then I can, uh, and then I can change his photo from file here. I can change his middle name, first name, last name. I can change his department. I can change his access groups, access level, uh, car parking group, uh, and uh, uh, his validity. I can write here his email, his mobile, and any notes. And I can also see permissions. What is his credential? The, I see his credentials here. I can change it. I can add credentials. Uh, <coughs> I see. I see his PIN code, uh, anti passback immunity, uh, automatic override, and all these uh, uh, details. But I can also uh, add a new user. I have to decide if it will be an ID holder or a visitor. And when I uh, uh, choose one of, one of them, then I will see all the fields that we saw before and I can fill them, his first name, last name, and I'm not gonna repeat it, but all this field that we saw uh, before now can be filled. Okay, so this was the users uh, uh, screen. Now we'll go to logdowns. Here, in the lockdown screen, we can see all the lockdown groups that are predefined in the system. We can see the name of the lockdown group, how many doors are in this uh, lockdown groups, and who are the immune users. Uh, but before, but before we drill down to the lockdown groups, I want for, I would like first to go to the event screen because I will uh, demonstrate you uh, the operation of the lockdown groups and. Uh, while doing so, we'll have to use the events, uh, the event screen. So we'll go first on the event screen, and then we'll go back to the lockdown groups. The event screen shows the list of all events that uh, occurred in the system. Uh, I can see the type of uh, the event, the name of the event, the location, uh, 
uh, where was it? And if there is a generator, who is the generator? And of course, the time of uh, the event. And if there is any alert, I can search specific event like a access event. And I see all the access events. Or I can filter the events by type from here, like controllers events. And I see all the controllers events. And of course, I can, uh, um, I can also sort it by time, last day, last hour, last week, and so on. Uh, if I will type on an event, I will see some more details regarding this event. Uh, we'll see the location uh, and generator. And I can also uh, export this uh, list of events uh, to Excel, CSV, PDF, HTML, or I can print it. I can print the list of events uh, to my uh, default printer. <coughs> Okay, so now after that we are familiar with the uh, familiars with the uh, events, we'll go to lockdowns. But let me see. I see somebody. If we are running extracts ng, I would. Okay, uh, there is somebody is asking if uh, how do I do the, how do I do the upgrading to extracts pro? Uh, there is a, a procedure and you'll have to buy a, a, a license according to your, the number of access points. And I can send you uh, information regarding this, this upgrade. Uh, there is a very neat way of upgrading. And somebody is asking what means immune users. Uh, immune users are users uh, that are allowed entering uh, uh, the doors even if uh, the lockdown is activated. And we will see it in a minute, uh, demonstrated uh, when I will activate a, a lockdown. Uh, okay. Okay, so now uh, we'll go back to the lockdown screen, the lockdown uh, module. Here we can see, uh, here we can see all uh, the lockdown groups that are predefined in the, uh, in the system. Uh, for example, lockdown group uh, number one has uh, three doors and three immune users, and also uh, two lockdown cards and one release card. I will click, I, I will click uh, on this group and then I will see some more details uh, uh, regarding this group. For example, I see that the three doors that will be locked if we will operate, if we will arm this uh, lockdown are the main door, marketing door and server room door. Uh, I can also see who are the immune users that will be allowed entering the doors even if the lockdown is activated. I can see uh, here this user and the department. And I can also see the cards. There's two types of cards. As we said, I can activate the lockdown from the uh, web client screen, and we'll see it in a minute, or from the PC client. But I can also use a card. I will pass a card uh, at any one of our readers, and it doesn't matter which uh, reader it is. And when I will present this card to the reader, the lockdown will be activated. This is an uh, initiate card. Uh, there is a release card, another card, that I will present uh, to any one of, of the readers uh, in the system. And it doesn't have to be uh, uh, the same reader that I used to activate uh, the lockdown. Uh, I can use any reader. And I will uh, demonstrate it uh, uh, in a minute. So now we will see how we activate uh, how we activate the lockdown. And but before that, in order to see the uh, uh, the activity of the users and to see who is immune and who is not, we will switch to the event screen. And I will take a user. This user is allowed to the marketing uh, to the marketing. Uh, 
uh, door. You see access granted, marketing door. Zeldon is allowed according to his access group. But this person, did you hear the beep? Is not allowed to the server room. You see, access denied, no access rights. Then I will take another user. I will swipe his card at the uh, marketing door. And I see that uh, access is granted because he is allowed according to his access group. But now I will pass it in the server room door. And we see that access is granted according to access level. His access group don't contain the marketing door, so he's not allowed uh, entering uh, due to his uh, uh, access group, but all, only due to his access level. Now I'll go to the lockdown screen and I will activate the lockdown. As I said, activation can be done from this screen, but uh, later I will show you that it can also be done by a, a card. So I will uh, press lockdown. Are you sure you want to log down? Yes, lockdown. And now the lockdown is activated. As you can see on the screen, the frame uh, uh, around this lockdown group is change its color to red. And there is the, the icon also changed to red. And all these uh, three doors are locked. They are red. If I go to events, I will see that uh, a lockdown lockdown manual command uh, and all these three uh, doors are in a lockdown situation and now the lockdown is activated now when the uh, lockdown is activated now i will swipe the user's card and the reader so i, I will take the first user and i swipe his card at the reader and I see that access denied uh, to the marketing door lockdown is not is not uh, immune, so access is denied. And if I go to the server room, I will see this access. The access is denied for this user because he has no access right. I don't even check if it is a lockdown situation. The the at the basic level is in the, in the panel itself. So if uh, is not allowed, we are not checking if we're in a uh, lockdown situation. By the way, this, uh, uh, this is done to check if it is in a lockdown situation and to allow or deny access according to lockdown is done in the server, not in the level of the uh, panel. Uh, and now I will take uh, I will take the I, I will take uh, Golan's card, and uh, I will pass his card, and in the marketing door, when you see that uh, door is open by PC, we see that open door the open the door is open during lockdown. We see that uh, this user is immune. And you see, lockdown immune, and now is allowed entering uh, the door. And if I'll take the same user and try to open the server room, and we see that also here, uh, it's because is immune, uh, the door will be open, the open door during a lockdown. Another thing that uh, we would like to see here, that uh, during a lockdown, if a door is open, you know that uh, Golan is allowed entering and I just open the door with this card. Well, that happens and you see that the color of the frame changes to yellow. It means that the lockdown is activated, but, uh, sorry, uh, is immune, open door during lockdown, but uh, there is still a situation of lockdown. For that, it's changed to uh, yellow. Now the door is uh, closed again. And I also want to show you that I can open a door momentarily during a, a lockdown or for permanent 
during a lockdown from the screen. Here you have the list of the doors. So I can decide to open, for example, the marketing door. And I said, okay, there is a lockdown now, but please open this door. Are you sure you want to open? And yes, now uh, the door is open and the frame is yellow. And if you go to events, that you will see that we open door during a lockdown. And I can also close this door uh, back, lockdown. And now I will see that it is locked back. Now I will release the lockdown, release, and I will activate, uh, just a minute, sorry. Uh, are you sure you want release? And now the lockdown is released and the frame is blue again. Now I will show you how I activate this lockdown using a card. I have here a card and I will swipe it uh, one of the, in one of the windows, for example, uh, window number two. And now the lockdown is activated. If I go to events, I can see that uh, the lockdown is uh, activated but I can see uh, that it is done here. Uh, lockdown, just a minute. I wanted to show you that I can see it. Uh, lockdown card, you see, it was done using a card. So it was activated by the car. And now I can go back to lockdown. And uh, now I will uh, disarm the, uh, the lockdown using this card and I do it in another reader. Now the lockdown is disarmed, the, the frame is blue again. And if I go to events, I can see that it was done uh, by a card, but it was done from reader number three. Okay, so this was for lockdown. Now we have two, uh, we remain, we have two uh, screen that we will go over it. This, the, the fourth, the fifth uh, screen is networks. Here I can see in this, uh, um, in this screen, I can see all the uh, networks that are predefined in the system. As you see, this is a demo case, this is a, uh, uh, a demo system, so I have only one uh, uh, one network defined. Uh, but of course, in a real life situation, we'll have a lot of networks here. I can see the status of the network, it is okay. The type of the network, this is a TCP IP network. It also can be a, a RS485 uh, network. And I see the name of the network it is the first floor. Of course, if it was, a real building, I will have network for the second floor, for the four, third floor, fourth floor, and so on. How many controllers do I have in this uh, network? Here I have only one. And the IP address, and the IP address uh, uh, of this network. And of course, the controller status. If I will click on the network, a side menu will be open. And now I will see for this specific network, all the controllers. Now I have only one, but I can see how many controllers are okay, how many uh, disconnected and how many disabled. And here I see, I will see all the list of the controllers, the type, it is AC805, the name, a uh, firmware version. And I can also do a test to the controllers. Now I have only one, so I will do a test to that controller. And after the test will be completed, I will see uh, the results of the test. I will see the time of the test, firmware version, uh, bootload version, hardware type, it is AC-825 and a D-805 on, on top of it. The D-805 is the board, it is the expansion board. Uh, and I see the description of it. Of course, as before, I can export the list, the whole list of networks to Excel, CSV, PDF, and HTML. And I can also print the list of all, uh, 
of all networks. Uh, now we'll go to reports. Uh, here I can see uh, reports of uh, uh, immediate reports. For example, I can see a report, the Who is Binning report, the, the Who is Binning Today report, that is actually a list that show where and at what time each uh, user was first granted access today. I can see uh, the type of the, uh, uh, of the user, his name, his department, location, uh, which, uh, which DAO he first entered, which, uh, uh, which uh, reader he first uh, passed through this morning, this day, uh, and at what time. I can sort it by doors. Now I'll see all uh, those who uh, first time today passed through door number two or door number three. Uh, I can uh, sort it by departments. See from marketing who arrived today, these guys, or from uh, management who came today. Uh, and so on. I can also sort it. Uh, by time, from what time to what time. And of course, I can export it or print it and get a, a print preview. And I see all this uh, uh, list and I can print it. Okay. And uh, another, um, another report is attendance report. I, I can choose any month that I would like. Uh, to have this report. I see, uh, first of all, for uh, which user it is, and I can see uh, all the days in, uh, in this month, and what the day of the week, and uh, what is the time he entered, and when he left. Now there is no uh, details here because I didn't uh, pass out. The duration, if there will be in and out, there will be duration, and I can, can see uh, comments uh, absence and so on. I, I can uh, show more and go and do it to other users. Uh, show more uh, here. Of course, I can filter uh, by uh, users. I, just, I can choose to which users I would like to have uh, this, uh, uh, this report or what departments uh, and so on. And of course, I can export and print this, uh, 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 this list, these reports. Okay, that's it. Uh, are there any questions uh, regarding the web client? Guys, are there any questions? Guys, are you with me? Are there any questions? Okay, so I see that there's no any question. So uh, just a minute, somebody wrote me here, something. Uh, no question, thank you. Okay, I see there's no questions. So um, thank you for uh, being with me. If there, uh, I recorded this uh, session, so I will send you the recording so you can go over it again. And I will also send you the presentation. If you have any uh, questions uh, uh, later on, you can uh, contact me by, uh, uh, you can contact me by mail or by phone. In my email, you will see uh, at the end of the email uh, my uh, telephone number, so you can also call me. And I really thank you for being with me. And I wish you uh, a great day and see you in uh, our next session. Okay, so bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.